What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Microsoft Flow, and we are talking about HTTP request triggers. So what is a HTTP request trigger? It is a trigger that you can configure in Microsoft Flow, and that will that will like act as an endpoint for your flow. Like So you could have a uh, an external system calling your flow to then do an action. So for an example, you could have an external website and on that website you get people to fill in details um, because they want to maybe subscribe to your mailing list. From that information, you could have your website send an API request to your Microsoft Flow's endpoint and the HTTP request will listen for it once it's triggered based on this information coming in we can then get the information that's being sent and we can do things with it. So let's take a look at it. Now, when you start off in Microsoft Flow, uh, I'm going to show you how to create the request. So this is a brand new Microsoft Flow. We've got no triggers and we can just type into the search bar HTTP. And then at the bottom, we have when a HTTP request is received. So we click on that and we get this screen here. So we've got this HTTP post URL and it says the URL will be generated after save. So this is basically not allowing you to do anything with this before you actually save it. So it's not giving you a URL off the bat, only once you save the record will you be able to actually generate that. And we also have the request body JSON schema. So this is trying to understand JSON. So uh, again, like I've shown in previous videos, you can um, take a, a, a an example of your JSON that you'll be sending back and you could upload it through this sample and then it'll automatically create the schema for you. A really useful tool if you don't want to create your own schema. If I expand the advanced options, we also have method and relative path. So method are your HTTP actions like get, put, post, patch and delete. Um, the get method allows you to send a request and get information back. The put allows you to replace a already existing like record or, or entry there. Post allows you to create a new one, uh, so a new record or a new post to it. Patch allows you to update an existing record, so a little bit like put, but we're only modifying a little bit of that data. And delete allows you to delete it. We also have the relative path. So the relative path is a way you can specify uh, what it is you're doing. So, um, so like where you want um, to go. So you could have an API that would then go um, to maybe look at customer data. So you'd look do like a, forward, a customer forward slash customer ID. And then you could get that back from your HTTP request that's coming in. Now, bit of a blue Peter moment here. I'm going to show you one I did earlier. So here we are with a HTTP request. So I've already generated this. I've got my schema uh, for my JSON here. I'm specifying a post. And because I've saved the record, I now have a HTTP post URL that I can post to. So I can send a request to this URL to then, um, as a post, and send a bunch of information in the JSON um, schema that I've already come up with. And that will allow me to um, send the data in from another source and get that and then do stuff with it. So I'm going to click on test. I'll choose I'll perform the trigger and choose test. Now, on my other computer, I have a program called Postman set up. Postman allows me to uh, do certain things um, like like mimicking posts and gets and things like that. Uh, and on there, I'm going to send a request. So I'm going to send a post with some JSON and uh, we'll see those results come through in a second. There we go. So when HTTP rest request is received. So I have sent a post from my other computer and this is what I've sent. So I've sent through a JSON, um, a JSON array filled with this information. So we've got Bob Smith, we've got Matt Collins Jones, and we've got Fred Flintstone. So I've already pre-configured that in my Postman. So it's kind of like mimicking 
a live system where maybe you'd have a website or some other API that would be sending these requests through with information that you then want to do things with. But we can see that the HTTP request allows us to have that endpoint as somewhere to point it to. Uh, and that's really powerful because you can then trigger things off of that. So you could, as I said, if you're um, sending information in from a website, you can get that information from customers and then you could create a record, you could create an email. And later on, I've, I've gone through and I've parsed the, I parsed the array uh, and selected, um, selected data from that. So you can do all these actions off the back of what we are getting in. So this is re really, really powerful if you know how to use it. And if you have like a business need to have a system that maybe doesn't integrate very well with the Power Platform with Microsoft, so maybe an external website or another sort of type of um, system that you're running that doesn't have um, the capability to just connect to flow, you know, natively, we can use this or connect to a dynamic system natively. We can use this to then go get data and put it in maybe the CDS or maybe in SharePoint or somewhere else. So it's really really powerful. Let me know what you guys think. Is this something that maybe was a bit complicated that I've kind of simplified for you? Is this something that you will be talking to your company about and getting to implement? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like and share my video if you thought this was useful. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ciao for now.